Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Llewellyn von Sale, and I'd like to welcome you to my short little micro series on important things to consider when utilizing structured equation modeling. The first one today, we're going to talk about the criteria used to evaluate um, your model. So, what are some of the things you have to look at when, uh, after you've estimated your measurement models and your structural models, to ensure that you indeed do have the best model for the data that you have? So there are a couple of things that's really important to consider before we go into the evaluation criteria. The first thing is that there is really no universally acceptable or accepted number, no single number that will tell you that the um, data that you have is the best possible, or the model that you have is the best possible model for your data. Unfortunately, we have to kind of systematically build a case, like in a court case, that kind of supports our argument that the model that we've had that we've taken, that we've used, is indeed the best possible model for our data. So we utilize various forms of indicators. So not just one thing, we look at a whole bunch of um, different things. One thing that we look at is we look at model fit criteria, right? And the other thing that we look at is um, measurement quality. It's important to remember that even though you get a very good and excellent fitting model, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best model for your data. Um, that's also an indicator then of the measurement quality. So is your items loading significantly? Um, is it reliable? So those are the two things you kind of um, have to take in consideration. And you have to do this for every single model that you assess because we utilize a competing measurement modeling strategy. So you have four or five uh, theoretically informed models and then you systematically compare them in order to see which one is the best. <clears throat> so let's look at what is the specific criteria. So if we first look at um, model fit indices, there are a couple of things we have to take into consideration. The first one is we always look at chi-square. Now, chi-square is kind of like an uh, indicator of model misfit, right? So in the perfect world, we want the chi-square of zero. Unfortunately, that will never happen. So the lowest chi-square between the two or three different models that you're testing, that will indicate to you which is the best fitting model. So the lowest one between the three. Um, it's also important to know that you want a non-significant chi-square because it's an indicator of model misfit, right? Um, but when you compare the different models, so if I want to compare my one model with my other model, I want a significant difference. So it's a bit of a, a play on words, but um, directly you look at um, the lowest chi-square and it needs to be non-significant. The next thing that we look at is <clears throat> RMC. Very important here is that the root, mer the root mean square error of approximation needs to be around um, 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 to kind of give you a uh, indicator of good fit. Um, marginal fit is like 0 0.06 to 0 0.08. Anything higher than that, um, there's something wrong with your model and you need to refigure, uh, reconfigure it to get the, the better fit or correlate some error terms or something. Um, and the confidence interval on the actual result does not include zero. If it includes zero, then it shows you that um, the, this, the sampling couldn't kind of reproduce itself, all right? So two things important. It needs to be between the ranges of 0 0.1 and 0 0.8, and the confidence interval change needs to be between, uh, does not have to, should not include zero. Um, SRMR, kind of similar to RMC, it needs to be smaller than 0 0.8. Um, but usually the first thing that we look at is the CFI and TLI values. Um, these are kind of like indicators of uh, overall fit of your model. And we want values higher than 0 0.9. 0 0.9 is literally the lowest that we can possibly go. So we first usually look at uh, TLI and CFI to see if our model actually fits. Um, and then we compare that to the different um, models that we have. And I'll show you how to do that in a, in a different video. Um, the same with the, the, the TLI, same exact criteria, higher than 0 0.09. However, anything bigger than 0 0.99 or 0 0.98 is an indicator that there might be something wrong. So also just check your um, results if you get something like that. And then finally, another metric that we use to kind of compare different models with one another is the AIC and BIC values. Now, similar to, to chi-square, we're really looking at the smallest value between the different models. So if model one is uh, as a AIC of 
100, model two of 200, and model three of 300, that model one with the AIC of 100 is the one that kind of wins, all right? Pretty straightforward criteria. The things that are not so straightforward is then if we move over to the second aspect we have to look at, which is the measurement quality. Of course, we first always evaluate overall model fit. If the model doesn't fit the data, um, then there's no need for us to actually go and look at some of the other um, aspects. So once we've determined the best fitting model for our data, we have to go start looking for um, the item loadings. So the standardized uh, estimates from the items that you specified onto the factor that it loads. These things always have to be bigger than 0 0.40, and they have to load significantly, all right? So those are the two very important criteria. Um, your residual variances also need to be very small. They kind of have to center around zero. If you've got big ones, um, there's probably an issue with an item, um, but try and keep it to um, as small as possible. Um, so if we move then away from the, the same stuff itself, there is another thing you have to consider, and that's kind of like the composite reliability. So in terms of the internal consistency of the instrument. So you can use, well, Kronbach Alpha, which you don't really use, but in structural equation modeling, we kind of use like Rho or McDonald's Omega or something to that effect, to kind of estimate the items that's loading on a certain factor, is it reliably doing so? Um, and there's certain criteria that you utilize depending on the um, technique that you use. So if you use McDonald's Omega, for example, anything bigger than 0 0.8, would be a good indicator. And then finally, um, once you have all of this stuff in place and you find that even though you've tried every single angle, your model just doesn't get to the point where it fits your data, but you've got excellent measurement quality, we have to figure out a way in which to improve the model. And you should we look at the modification indices and try to look at um, certain items if you correlate the error terms with one another, if it would improve our chi-square significantly. Um, and it's important to remember there, when you modify factors or, or um, variables, uh, there needs to be a theoretical justification for it. So you can't correlate an item from, I don't know, happiness on performance, for example. There needs to be a very strong theoretical indicator for it, and you need to be able to justify that. All right. I really hope that uh, this helped you a little bit. So by now, you should be able to go out and evaluate your own model. Thank you guys so much for your time.